Hi everyone, it is Tisha Rowe. Um, for those who do not know me, I am a family medicine physician and the founder of Rodox. And today I am talking about what do you need if you decide to see a telemedicine physician online for coronavirus screening. Um, if you are following my Facebook page, you have seen that I have been very vocal about the coronavirus. I am um, in many physician groups where we are able to correspond directly with physicians who are in the states that are most heavily impacted by coronavirus and learn from their experiences and to be able to bring that proactively to our communities to try to avoid what's happening in Italy, what's happening in Seattle, what's happening in New York, um, from happening in the cities where we live, and in my case, Houston, but also wherever you may be. So if you've been paying any attention at all, you have probably heard the words telehealth or telemedicine. So this is something that I know very well because in 2014, I started a telemedicine company and I have been doing telemedicine ever since. I am very happy to see that the healthcare community is moving forward, that CMS and Medicare, uh, CMS, which includes Medicare and Medicaid, are um, proactively reimbursing for it. Um, medical boards, who are the people who decide if doctors can work in their state, are waiving requirements, so making it easier for doctors to do telemedicine wherever they may be for everyone. These, these are things that um, I'm sad that it had to happen this way, but that I've been hoping would happen in terms of reimbursement, in terms of licensing for years because it just makes sense. And what um, we cannot let happen is this crisis blows over and they just say, okay, well now we're not going to do it anymore. No, because another crisis can come up. So this should be the norm. Okay, so now that we know a little bit of background about telemedicine and where we stand as far as telemedicine is concerned, two things that I am going to discuss today. Um, I'm going to discuss if you are sick and you think think you have symptoms of coronavirus, how a telemedicine works, and what you need for that telemedicine visit. Everyone, the CDC, every health department is talking about, hey Raymond, um, thank you all for tuning in. And if you find this helpful, if, share. If you don't find it helpful, carry on, okay? Um, but everyone is talking about telemedicine, everyone's talking about, oh, how to avoid coronavirus, but inevitably, someone's going to get it. And no one is really talking about, what do you do if you think you have it up to the point it's confirmed that you have it? And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I will be more than happy to respond and address those questions. So the symptoms of coronavirus are fever, cough, shortness of breath. So if you have those, you need to be evaluated by a medical professional, right? It does not mean you have coronavirus. You could have the flu or any other of a multitude of viral infections, right? But let's say you think you went to China or Italy or Iran or any other country or Seattle, you think or your coworker has it, I could have coronavirus. What next? Okay. What you will hear um, for from a lot of city officials. And first of all, thank you to the city of Houston, Houston, um, Texas Health Department, Mayor Sylvester Turner, for all of your hard work. I know it is 
unspeakably difficult to manage a crisis. I think Mayor Turner is going to go down in history as the mayor who's had to manage the most crises during his terms. But thank you for what you're doing. But what you're going to hear is if you're sick, one, call a hotline. I haven't called the hotline. I don't know what you're going to hear if you call the hotline. And two, you can go to the health department. Hey, Dr. Smith, one of my favorite doctors. Um, you can go to the health doc department if you don't have insurance and either you'll get free care or they're not going to charge you, right? So that's option one. My issue with option one is if you're insured and you're going to one of the big health systems, then you have access to um, telemedicine. But if you're poor and uninsured, well, hey, come into these health centers that are going to be packed. There are other vulnerable people and we don't have telemedicine. And I have zero doubt they're trying to figure out telemedicine right now as we speak, right? But um, if you look at my page, you'll see I've posted a link with um, an example of epidemiology, how every day that goes by that they're trying to figure out it out instead of referring people to established telemedicine companies, more people are getting infected. So I have a problem when insured people have access to more insurance um access to more resources than uninsured. So I want everyone, insured and uninsured, to have access to telemedicine. And that is what my company, Rodox, offers. So um, let's go through, you think you have coronavirus, you start having symptoms, you have all of these symptoms, or maybe you have two out of three, or maybe you just have a fever, okay? In that case, first thing is contact your doctor, right? Your doctor knows you better, best. I would rather you see your doctor than me any day, right? But if your doctor tells you come into the office, then that is not safe, in my opinion, as a medical professional. Um, at that point, I think you should find a virtual doctor, okay? What the virtual doctor is going to do is ask you a series of questions your medical history, including what's happening, why you think you have this virus, um, your, your background, medications you're on, all of these things. They don't need to touch you or anything because at this point, based on travel history and personal symptoms, that is what's going to determine if you're a candidate for testing. So this is the screening process which is best done online because God forbid you actually have the virus. If you do, we do not want you going to an emergency room, urgent care, or health center infecting other people, right? So in an ideal world, you talk to a virtual doctor. The virtual doctor then refers you to a testing center and if possible, communicates with that testing center that you're on your way. So most of the big health systems have testing centers. They're doing drive up testing. They have tents, right? You don't have to go in the building. You don't have to go infect people. Whereas if you did not do that telemedicine appointment first, you would have had to walk into that building, touch the door handle, touch the surface, sign into a sheet, talk to all these people. And every minute that you're in there doing all of those things, you're potentially affecting others if you're actually positive. So we have to eliminate that step. That is why telemedicine is so important. So I promise to share what you need for the telemedicine appointment. The number one question I get is, do I need any equipment? The answer is, in terms of equipment that you actually have to have that you cannot do the visit without you need nothing right but here is what i think as a telemedicine doctor would be very helpful to your doctor number one thermometer right everyone's out there buying toilet paper and hand sanitizer um you may touch a surface that you don't realize you touched and then touch your face now you have coronavirus is that toilet paper going to help you now? No, okay? It doesn't, from what I've heard, cause diarrhea. <laughs> so um, a thermometer will give the doctor very useful information for you. Specifically, what is your temperature? 
Why is this so important? Because when you think you have a fever, sometimes you don't, okay? The definition of a fever is 100.4. Most of the times when I was working in urgent care, people who thought they had a fever did not. That means you can be 99.9, .9, which is higher than normal, but it's not a fever. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have coronavirus, but it's extremely helpful if that doctor can tell if your temperature is 99 versus 105. But if you went and bought all the toilet paper, but didn't bother to pick up a thermometer, the doctor doesn't have that information. That's number one. Number two that I would recommend is a blood pressure cuff. Why a blood pressure cuff, right? Coronavirus causes Fever, cough, shortness of breath. What does that have to do with blood pressure? When people, especially with viral illnesses like the flu, are really sick, right? All the germs get into their blood cell. Their, their cardiovascular or blood vein and artery system, things start dilating, a sign of people being septic, um, people being very ill is their blood pressure can drop. Right, So if your blood pressure is normal, 120 over 70, versus somebody else, their blood pressure is 90 over 60, right? I might be able to give you some advice to get tested, um, outpatient, and here's what we can do versus that person whose blood pressure is 80 over 60. I can call the emergency room and say, look, whether this person has flu or coronavirus, they're really sick. I need you to get them in, get them triaged. They're on their way. Let's call an ambulance. A blood pressure cuff can be so helpful, right? So if you have all the toilet paper in the world and no blood pressure cuff, I want you to order a blood pressure cuff on Amazon.com today. Don't go to HEB. Don't go to CVS and encounter 100 people from the door to leaving um, because it's so packed. Just order it online. And even if you never have to deal with coronavirus, at some point, you may need these items in the future. So it's not a loss. The other thing I want you to get is um, what we call antipyretics, which means um, anti-fever medications. So stock up on your Motrin, Advil, ibuprofen, Tylenol, right? So if you get a fever, it's not gonna cure anything, but at least if you're not sick enough to be hospitalized, you have your anti-fever medications on on deck okay but if you use them you need to let a doctor know you use them so they could know the reason your temperature is normal is because you've already taken some tylenol or motrin now something you don't need but if you want to go all the way out um they do sell online um online stethoscopes you can actually plug it into the computer, put it on your chest, and the doctor can hear your heart and lungs through their computer. Do you absolutely need this? No. But we know that one of the most common signs, one of the most common complications of coronavirus is pneumonia. So if you just have the money to spend, um, I would much rather you spend it on a, a tool that can actually help a doctor help you virtually like that than unnecessary food and supplies. Um, I don't know the cost of them, but I know that they are readily available and have been available for years. We just have not had a need for them. And even if you don't have one individually for your homes, this is something great that corporations churches and schools can buy that way if someone in your um establishment your church your school or your company gets sick they have access to that through your building okay or even apartment buildings right so those are three things um the fourth thing again i do not know the cost of this but would be extremely helpful is what we call a pulse oximeter, right? And what that means is it tells us how much oxygen is in your system, right? How much oxygen is flowing through your blood um, and coming from your lungs and flowing through your blood. So someone who has a 100% oxygenation level, you're great. 
it is very um, unlikely you have pneumonia, even if you have a fever. My phone is low, so I'm going to have to wrap this up soon. Phone battery is a little low. And so if yours is 100% versus someone's who's 85%, 85%, I'm getting you to the hospital right away, right? So those are things that can really help make the difference. Now, if you have none of these things, you can still see a virtual doctor. You can still do telemedicine. But these are things that can actually help give the doctor crucial information that can help them with their decision making. So really quickly, I'm going to cover how a telemedicine visit works. I'll speak for my company, Rodox.com, but many telemedicine companies, it's the same. Um, you go to our website, Rodox.com, you click register. That puts you in our system, allows us to communicate with you um, and respect your patient privacy. So it's better than trying to text, um, direct message or email. You can request an appointment. We will then send you, based on your availability, date and time that you can see a doctor. You will download an app, which we would send you the link for. You would then video conference with a doctor through the app that you downloaded. After that video conference, the doctor would A, give you prescriptions. That could be cough medicine or um, antibiotic if it seems like your illness is viral, if it seems like your illness is bacterial versus viral. Or that doctor could say, actually, you are high risk for coronavirus. I am going to send you to the nearest testing center. Here's where it is. Here's where you need to go. Um, after that testing, the doctor may recommend A, that you are quarantined at home, or B, that you are actually admitted to a hospital if you have, you know, based on those vital signs from what you had, a high temperature, low blood pressure, low oxygen, right? So if you have all of those issues, they may want you to actually be inpatient. But if they quarantine you at home, the blessing of telemedicine is now they can follow up with you in 48 hours. They can follow up with you in one week online from your home and make sure you're not getting worse and that we don't need to escalate you to a higher level of care. Okay, um, so... Those are my recommendations. I know a lot of people have a lot of um, trepidation when it comes to telemedicine and thinking, hey, you know, don't you need to put lay hands on me? I am not a pastor. I don't need to lay hands on you. My recommendations and my expertise is based on years of training, years of knowledge. This is a situation where we don't want to infect our doctors unnecessarily um, with a screening process that can be done online. So if you have any questions at all about telemedicine, I welcome you to post them in the comments, whether you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, and I will be happy to respond. Follow Rodox.com. I'm posting video updates. Um, our doctors are um, posting to our blog. Dr. Cindy Duke and I will be doing another live later today at 12 p.m. And we are in this with you. I do not believe in panicking. I do not believe in um, fear mongering, but I do believe in us being cautious um, being informed and knowing the resources that are available to us. So Rodox is one of many available resources available to you. So um, if you found this helpful, again, please share. And if you have any questions, connect with us at R-O-W-E-D-O-C-S on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, or visit our website, Rodox.com. Thank you for listening and I hope you found this helpful. Have an amazing day.